Hi there, welcome to the next video on this course. This is going to be regarding the global tab. Now there's loads in here, some of which we'll go into in detail, some of which we won't even look at at all. Like for instance the send and the output, stu output stuff, we won't look at that at all because it's more to do with this section and in conjunction with this section, the effects really. So we'll go into that later. Okay, it's pretty self-explanatory this bit anyway, so... Not really that much to worry about. It's just certain things that maybe um, you won't really get, you won't really understand. So the first thing is the voice mode, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's the same as every other synth really that has these functions. You've got the poly mode, which is uh, polyphonic. Basically, you can play more than one note at a time. Let me just see if there's a piano that we can use in there. That's a little bit better to so. So you can play scales and stuff. Uh, chords and stuff, sorry. Retrigger. Retrigger is monophonic. And in every no, every time you hit a note, it just retriggers a new envelope. So I can hit a note, keep it down, and then even with that one press, if I push another note, the other note will trigger. Pretty easy. Then you have legato. Legato is monophonic always, uh, also, but the envelopes continue. They are not re-triggered until you leave a space between consecutive notes. So if I play a note and hold it, hold it down, play another note, it doesn't re-trigger the note. It just continues the note. But so you need to leave a gap, really. If you if you, if you keep something, if you if you hold a note down. It does it like that, whereas the re-trigger... Anyway, pretty self-explanatory. Arpeggiator, probably the one that everyone knows. Just plays an arpeggiated sequence, and that's all controlled from here. But we're not going to get into that at the moment. What else do we have? We have Geophonic. Now, Geophonic's a strange one. Um, it's basically low note and high note priorities. This comes from when old synths would only allow you to play two notes at the very most at once. So, for instance, if I play a C and then play notes above it, certain generators um, will play in a specific way. Now, if I remember correctly... Odd numbered oscillators have low note priority. So what that means if as I play a C and then keep that held down and play any notes higher than the C that I've played, it won't play them. So if I play a C now, I'll play a C3, then try and play a C4. I'm pushing the C4, but you're not hearing anything. But if I push the C3 and push C2, because it's an odd number oscillator, you will hear C2. So that means the low note gets priority. Now if I turn that off and put in oscillator 2, now that's an even number, so the high note will have priority this time. So if I play C3 and then play C2, you won't hear it. Oh, sorry, I need to turn the volume up. No, you can't hear it. But if I play C3 and play C4, you will hear it. It's just a little quirky thing from the old synths of days gone past. Okay, what's next? Voices. Pretty um, self-explanatory. Just um, where you can choose how many voices you want the synth to play. Now this is can be used to free up CPU and whatnot. You've got few, medium and many. Few is approximately four notes. However, there is an intelligent system built into this. It may play five, it might only play three. It just depends on the complexity of the patch, I believe. And if I put it back to polyphonic first. So it's playing quite a few. Medium is supposed to be approximately eight.
but who knows? But and many supposed to be approximately sixteen. So that's all that means really. Okay, what do we have next? Next we have voice drift. No, we have pitch bend. Pitch bend again, pretty self-explanatory. Pitch bend. My pitch wheel on my MIDI keyboard. If I press a key and push it up, it will go one octave. Up and one octave down. You can change it up to 24. And down to 24 as well. So everybody probably knows about that one anyway. Very easy to understand. Okay, we have smooth attacks and voice drift next. Now, for, the, for those of you that know anything about synths, you probably understand what smooth attacks is, although you don't see it very often. Basically, if you have a sound that's got a fast attack, like a piano or something else, but you're hearing a little click because the attack's too fast, if you turn on the smooth attacks, it smooths the attacks off. Just a little bit. It's not really... It's not really going to be detrimental to your sound, but it will get rid of the little click for you. It's actually kind of like increasing the release when you've got a really attacky sound. You won't really hear it on this, I don't think. No, but if you've got, if you ever make a sound that's got a really fast attack and it's clicking, you can't get rid of it. Try that. Okay, there's voice drift there. What this does again, it's an old throwback from the old synths. Um, when it's on, each note is slightly detuned, basically to try and emulate the way the old classic analog synths used to drift. It's very difficult to hear. Turn it off. Turn it on. Oh no, you can hear it. You can hear it there for sure. So that's what it does. It just kind of... Um, Let's them detune a little bit. Okay, this section here can be really confusing for people. Um, and most people will never use it. Basically, there's files that you can get called TUN files. Dot T-U-N. And it's a scale file. Um, there's one there, but I'm not even going to load it in. Um, but basically, what you can do is you can get these TUN files with, like, different scales. Um, for tuning. Um, so, for instance, we're using a just a basic Western scale, but you could probably load in Indian scales of all different types of music, all different countries, all different scales that different places use, and you can tune everything as well. So, if I put that to zero. So that's the way it should sound, but if I put it to 12, it will play a, an octave higher. Again, that can be used for um, maybe a synth that, you, that you're triggering from your maybe keyboard that you had, that maybe C3, maybe it's C2 or C4 or something's gone out of tune. But again, I don't really use them, because I just stick to normal tuning. And fine is just another part of tuning. Tuning will shift uh, plus and yeah, yeah, it'll go up to plus or minus 24 semitones or two octaves. And fine will go 50, is it? Yeah, 50 cents, which is a tenth of a semitone. It's just for more tuning, I guess. Okay, the next section here we've got is like the glide section. So there's glide, glide to, and mode. The glide mode, basically when it's set to time, it means that however far apart the notes are, the glide will sound, um, will take the same amount of time to occur. So if I put the glide up, if I play C3 and C4, the time it takes for the glide to move from one note to the next will always be the same. When it's set to rate, the notes that are further apart, the glide will be slower. So, and 
So that was one octave. Quite slow then, two octaves it takes longer. And the glide is basically the timing that you can add for the glide to take effect. There is other stuff that's a little bit more important than that. And as you can see up there, it's called, if I hover over here, Portamento, which is another name for glide. But in glide one, it, you can use the key follow modulator to um, adapt with this, but we'll get into that later when we start really looking at oscillators and FMOs. And, and same with glide two. Glide two is it's basically the same, but it's a bipolar effect, a bipolar offset even, which means that it works on even numbered oscillators and FMOs and stuff and uses the key follow two. You probably don't know what I'm talking about, but if you look in here, we've got a key follow and key follow two, which if we come here, which are basically, um, I guess it's more tuning stuff really. But we'll get we'll get into that a bit deeper when we really start looking at the oscillators and stuff in much more detail. Range again is another it's an old throwback from old analog since you can make the sounds really slurry and slow the closer you get to the target note. So the further away it'll be more precise, the closer you get the notes can start to change. It's a difficult one to let you hear. But I'll try and figure out something that'll help you understand that a bit better. Let me just turn the glide off. No, it's, um, we'll uh, discuss it later on. When we, we use sounds that are especially going to take advantage of these types of things, sliding from one note to the next and stuff. And last but not least, we've got a swing generator. Now, the best way to let you hear that work is if we just get rid of most of this. I'll just create one single long note and I'll put it on arpeggiator mode. So come to here, put it on to arpeggiator. Come here, so we've got a basic arpeggiator. Okay, so now if I go and activate the swing generator, you'll hear the arpeggiator change. So you can hear it changing there. Um, you're just adding swing, and what it really does is, if you've got like notes that are quantized, i.e., bang on on the lines there, they can sound very mechanical and robotic. So you can add swing to really move these a little bit to the side and stuff, give it a more human feel. Anyway, that's all I'm going to cover in the global section at the moment. That, as you can, as you know, there's other parts here but they come under different section also so I hope you learned something from that and I'll see you in the next video